All right, guys, so today what we're gonna focus on is cutting bangs. I'll start with doing a longer side fringe and then I'll go in and I'll cut a curtain bang for you guys. You can see that as well. We'll get two different bang haircuts out of this one. I wanna start off with answering the question about how much hair to put in your fringe. We'll base this off of a left-hand side part. So I'll comb everything back just like this. And then I'm gonna figure out where her parting is. It's a pretty important question to ask your client where they most of the time part their hair. If they're not sure, obviously just have them pretend to move their hair over. As soon as they do that, then you'll kind of know where it's at. You don't have to be so precise in exactly where they're gonna part it, but definitely within, you know, an inch or so in this at this point. So a safe point for me is right at the edge, about half an inch, maybe eighth of an inch in from the edge of the eyebrow. So I start right there and I draw my line back to about the crown of the head. The whole time I'm doing that, I'm focusing on the density of the hair. How much hair do they have? If their hair is super thick, then I'm going to be more careful with how much hair I add to the bangs and then also the elevation that I take the bangs in. So I'm gonna work diagonal forward partings because I wanna keep my fingers parallel. We're creating this angle to come across the face. The first thing I wanna do is decide where I want that first little bit to hit. We're gonna say like right around the nose area. I wanna keep these a little bit longer because we're gonna cut the curtain fringe as well. So I'll comb the hair in the direction I'm gonna part and then I take from the parting down. This is where I don't have to worry about how much hair I'm putting into it. The curtain fringe is going to be a little bit different, how big our section is. This here, I'm taking it little by little, so I'll kind of work it in that way. So at first, I take my first diagonal parting, just like that. This angle here, I basically think of it as it's following through, and this is where the hair is going to lay, right? So my finger angle will then mimic that parting, so it'll be parallel. To the parting and then as soon as I cut this it then falls short to long and lays short to long this way so I take that section I bring it over to me I'm standing on the opposite side of the chair pulling from this side of the head my elevation for my first line is not high I just cut my guide so right here and I go through and I start to cut my line just like that so now you'll see You've got your shorter piece down to your longer. So now we always talk about elevation and elevation takes out weight. So as soon as I start lifting this hair up, weight starts to come off. It, basically what it does is it takes the hair that's um, your guide that's shorter and it cuts the hair that's on top of it a little bit longer as you lift. So this I cut straight down because again, usually I'm working off of, I find 90 degrees, which is here. And then I drop this, this is now pretty much sitting at zero degrees. So here's the head shape, 90 degrees, holding the hair at about zero, right? Now I go here and I take care from here. Now look where 90 is. And now look where 90 is. And this, if I keep bringing everything to this stationary point right here, it gets heavier and heavier as I go. So every section that I take, when I take another parting here, and I bring it over to me. Now I'm gonna slightly elevate this just to counteract the head shape that's starting to curve away. So I don't take it way up right away. That's not the goal. I want it to be nice and soft, but instead of it being here, I then bring it here. And then the next section I'll bring here and just slightly lifting uh, as I bring the hair over, which will give me a softer effect and remove a little bit of weight and make it nice and soft as it comes around the head shape. The other thing is when we talk about density, the density of the hair starts to come into play as we take sections across. If they have thinner hair and I wanted to thicken up the fringe a little bit, I would just go parallel and work, boom, right up to the next one. That'll start bringing in more of the density, more of the hair, and then boom, take another one, more of the density, more of the hair, and then at, so on and so forth. If they have thick hair, I'm gonna pivot instead of going like this, my move will be like this. And then it'll be like this and I'll come across. That way I'm not grabbing hair from all the way up here. I'm just pulling in a little bit from the front fringe area as I go. We'll say that this is for thick hair. I pivot just like that and I bring that over to my guide. And again, work on that elevation, slightly lifting it up. 
So now you can see it's falling nice and has that nice angle to it. Use that pivot point and again, come across, bringing it over to me. Elevation, a little bit more. And I'll continue, so you can see right here, I'll continue to that edge, about an eighth of an inch from the edge of our eyebrow right there. So one more on the pivot across, working on that elevation. So there you go. Now you have that angle. When she combs it over or blow dries it over, you get that kick and you have a nice side fringe on the haircut. Now, again, we go into the weak side, which we've talked about quite often. So this is the part side. You got your heaviness, all the density sitting here. Then you have a lot less hair uh, sitting on this side. So I'm not gonna necessarily cut the hair the same on this side as I did on the opposite. So what I'll do is I'll take a diagonal parting just from that pivot point down and I'll shift my hand down and I'm just gonna build up a little extra weight on this side. So I shift my finger just like that and just connect that point and then that connects the bangs. So just giving me a little bit on each side but not going too extreme with it. Just gonna blow dry these so you can see them, how they fall. I'm gonna grab up something I never grab, which is a round brush. And I'll brush everything, kind of round brush it right to where I cut it. And then I'll let it go. You can see that volume there. And then let me brush it over. Let's use the finalizer, the flip turn, uh, Joyco hairspray. So you guys can see that's a nice little side fringe. So you can see how it flows nicely. And then these little layers that sit nice and soft, it has everything to do with that elevation of the hair as you're going through the process. So you're, as you're coming through here, you lift this up slowly as you're going across the head. You just think about where 90 is and then where zero would be off of that. I always think that anything below zero just gives you a very heavy line. Zero is pretty soft. It's, it's heavy, but it's soft at the same time. So I just go through here and then uh, bring it over and elevate. All right, so now we're gonna do a curtain fringe. Curtain fringe is pretty much cut on more of a center type parting. Somebody that wears their hair down the center. So I'll go right down the center like that. Then the way that a curtain fringe really works, and I'm guessing where it got its name, is that it's gonna start short, short in the center, and it gets longer and kind of curtains the face, opens up, so it kind of has that nice angle to it opens up the face, but what I like it when it kind of just hugs the eyes a little bit and opens up and hits right about the cheekbone area is where that length sits. So that's what we're gonna cut today. Center parting, just like this. I'm gonna do more elevation this time because a curtain fringe to me is lighter and it's gonna have a nice flow to it. The heavier it is, the more it's gonna wanna flop into her face. So I take still that same pivot point section comb this hair towards me, over direct it about an inch away from the nose. So over the nose, past the nose a little bit, have that elevation, and then I'm gonna start cutting up just like this. So we cut. Now, when I let that go, again, we get that short to long piece, but because of the elevation, it's gonna be nice and light. I've got this piece hitting right at the nose, some of you guys are probably like, how did you figure that out? How did you figure out how to get it to sit at the nose? For me, it's experience. If you guys don't have that experience, what I would do is take a piece from the top here and I would go to the nose without any tension. I would drop the hair in front of the nose and I would cut this piece right at the nose. And then once you have that guideline, you pull this hair up and you use that piece as your guide and you cut your line. Don't grab from the bottom and cut there, then you'll lose it. You'll That's where you'll end up with those short bangs. Now, we're gonna work off the pivot point. Let's pretend like they have thick hair. If they had thin hair, I would go straight parallel to that section, continue my way through until I was at the edge of the eyebrow and I would stop. With this, I wanna pivot just like that, bring the rest of the hair over to me, about an inch past the nose, and that's where I'm gonna cut. And then here, again, working off that pivot point, so that's the first side, shooting over. Now, we got our piece from the top. I'm gonna to comb the rest of this over, flip it away. So now I've got my guide piece. Come over to the other side of the head, take my diagonal parting from that pivot point, which is the top of this, right? That's the pivot point. Comb down, 
and now bringing that hair over to me about an inch past the nose. You got your guide, and now I'm gonna cut. Could point cut this as well if you wanted to. It would just soften your line a little bit if you want. Again, bring it over, inch past the nose, cutting the line. And that's about it. All right, so now I comb that down. So now you've got your long or your short point at the nose, and then it gets longer. Short point at the nose gets longer. That's going to allow us to have that curtained fringe look. I'm gonna blow it dry so you guys can see it. So I'm gonna blow dry these straight out, a little bit of volume. I'm going to use the round brush again, but I like using the round brush when the hair is almost dry because I don't like using a round brush. Not my cup of tea, but definitely necessary in life. So blow drying it, giving it some volume, nothing extreme, not 80s volume, straight out at about zero degrees, just to give me a nice, soft bend. This is the Joico Flip Turn. It's a 10 plus hold, so it's got a really strong hold to it. I love this thing for finishing looks, especially if you're trying to get a good shot for Instagram. Using this kind of hairspray will hold it in place, cuts down any of the frizz in the hair, all that kind of stuff. So now it's starting to come together. Yeah, I mean, this isn't a haircut here. Spray this through here, get everything looking nice. So I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the curtain fringe. Hopefully you can use it in the salon. Let me know what you think in the comments. Also subscribe to us on YouTube if you're not already. I think the key things to think about when you're cutting any kind of fringe is that elevation. The over direction's important, the elevation's important. Those are the two things you really gotta take into consideration. If they have thick hair, make sure you lift it above that zero point, nothing below. If you're trying to build weight, keep it at zero, work your angles, and then I think you'll have you know, more success with cutting a fringe behind the chair.